Hello. I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room, global population. So this is a worldometer. Okay, you can just Google global population and find it. This is the current world population. Seven, so write this number down. 7,522,210,850. Okay, and then we'll look at it towards the end of the video and, and see what, what it is. So, this is the birth today so far. This is the death today so far. If you take the birth rate minus the death, the birth today minus the death today, then you get the total number of people that you've added each day. This number is something like 240,000 people per day, every day of the year. Okay, so a lot of the problems like you know, climate change and overconsumption of resources and degradation of the biosphere are because this number is rising so rapidly at an exponential rate. If we were to lower the birth rate so that the births today match the deaths today, then this number would, would stabilize. Okay, obviously if this was decreased below the death today, the death rate, then this number would decrease and it would allow us to get a handle on a lot of our global problems. So let's go down. So this site is good. These are the 20 largest countries by population. Um, China, India, USA is third. And this is the curve. This is the exponential curve going back almost 2,000 years. And, you know, it's basically flatlined here and then it's increasing here. And now this is the nature of exponential growth. Talk about uh, an incredible hockey stick type curve. Um, so let's go down here. This is the growth rate percent wise. So we did have a growth rate, global growth rate in the 60s, over 2%. Um, that rate has dropped, it's down to about 1.11% per year in 2017. As long as the growth rate is above zero, you're going to have population growth. The current average population change is about 80 million people per year. Okay, so this is the, um, this is the world population, sort of historically and the change in the median age and the fertility rates are about 2.5. They were much higher, almost five in the 60s, they've dropped. But as long as this number is above the replacement rate, which is about 2.1 or so, then the population will rise. We're also seeing a, a massive shift of population into urban centers. Okay, if we look at the forecasts from the UN, the United Nations, talking about over 8 billion people in uh, 2025, over 9 billion in 2040, heading close to 10 billion by 2050. Okay, the yearly percentage change is decreasing. This would be the growth rate decreasing, medium age slightly increasing, fertility rates dropping, you know, and getting more and more urbanization. Okay, so milestones, let's work from the bottom. We reached a billion people by 1804. Two billion, it took 123 years to reach two billion. Then it took 33 years to reach the third billion. Then it took 14 years to reach the fourth billion. Then it only took 13 years to reach the, the fifth billion and so on. Okay, six billion, 1999. 7 billion 2011. So the time, the, because this is the nature of exponential growth, okay, the time from one milestone to the next gets shorter and shorter and shorter. 8 billion expected by 2023, 10 billion by 2056. Okay, this is all else being equal, which it's not with climate change, with abrupt climate change, because people have to eat. And if we start getting hits to our global food supply, then these numbers will stabilize and drop a lot quicker than we think. 
This is a summary table again, the 1 billion here, 2 billion in 1927, the third and fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth billion, etc. Okay, and then you can divide it up into, um, the, into growth rates in the different continents. So Asia huge, Africa huge, and so on. This is population densities. Okay, the darker, this is uh, the population density in terms of what unit do they say? It doesn't say on here. Um, a thousand plus, usually it's a square mile or a square kilometer or something. So you can see heavily populated regions of the world here. Um, and then it's broken down into religion and other things. Countries again here. Um, how many people have ever lived on Earth? This is an interesting question. It's estimated the total of about 106 billion people have been born since the dawn of the human species. Okay, so our 7.5 billion now is about 6% of all people who have ever lived on planet Earth are alive today and part of our 7.5 billion people. Okay, so, so this is a, a great site. Now there's all kinds of, um, this is a, another excellent site talking about world population growth um, and uh, some of the key changes. Again, it shows the exponential rise of global population and this is the annual growth rate peaking at about 2.1% and projected to drop. And here we are right now, we're about 1.1% or so. Okay, so, so we need to drop this faster than it is dropping in order to stabilize global population. Um, more graphs and more discussion. Uh, population by country, you can add your own country, you can look at the, pick out the curves from the United Nations. This is an excellent website, interactive website for that type of thing. Population by world regions and the growth rate, showing how the gro growth rate actually dropped off here with a big famine in China, okay? Very, you can have very rapid drops if there's not enough food to, to uh, supply people. Population growth rates in different places. Um, okay, there's all kinds of data on here. Population density, inhabitants per square kilometer. Okay, education of population. Education is very important, as I pointed out in a previous video on drawdown. Um, education of, you know, especially women in developing countries, you know, the education on family planning methods and things that are available, very, very crucial to, um, to stabilizing population growth. Fertility rates, um, total fertility rates, that's the children per woman. So in the 50s to 55, you know, less developed regions, six kids per family. Uh, the world here and more developed regions here, okay? Um, big, big difference. Um, demographic transitions. So we can talk about the way, the five stages of the demographic transition as a country is, you know, growing. You get a high birth rate, high death rate initially. The birth rate state in stage one, okay? Population about doesn't change too much then the birth rate stays high, the death rate falls. As medicines are improved, as infrastructure is improved, you get a rapid rise, and then the birth rate can, starts falling, um, and the death rate falls more slowly in this stage, and then they're both lower, and the birth rate rises again. So you can get these, these transitions for different countries. Okay, um, and, and this, so, so it looks at all kinds of stuff here. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna dwell on that much. So let's look at exponential growth. So anytime you see these curves like this, we get exponential growth. So here's the deal. The growth rate, if n is the population, the rate of change of the population is proportional to the population. So when your population is low, the growth rate's low. As n gets larger and larger and larger, then because this is a constant, the, the rate of change increases. So it's always increasing and increasing, and you get exponential growth. If you have logistic growth, then there's other factors 
the rate r gets smaller as the population gets larger and then you can get a, a, like an s curve here a tapering off okay so so this is obviously not happening with population but in nature there's things that constrain the population growth and uh, this is what you would get in, in, in uh, a lot of animal populations okay uh, predicting the future so people don't understand exponential growth how many times do you have to fold a single sheet of US letter paper to reach the moon in thickness? Okay, well, 20 folds, you reach Mount Everest. 42 folds, go to the moon, 50 to reach the sun. Just take a piece of paper and start folding it multiple times. See how that works. Einstein said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, he who doesn't pays it. Okay, um, and it talks about the power of the iPhone. So this talks about the exponential growth rates in technology. Okay, so this is time over here. This is the year and this is this is the different technologies that develop and the number of technologies is going up on an exponential rate. And if we apply this to taking CO2 out of the atmosphere and to cooling the planet, that will buy us time to try to stabilize, well, it'll be an attempt to stabilize the climate. Okay, so there's some techno people who just think, well, technology will solve everything. And this is what, you know, a lot of economists, they, they think this way. Okay, um, and so this is an excellent article going on about technology. Um, here's a view from the turn of the century about what they thought technology would be in 100 years. I think this is from 1900. And people have this 15 to 20 year fallacy. People can't fathom exponential growth. So they tend to use linear projections that on, on a future that's about 15 to 20 years away. Okay, it's a safe enough, it's far enough off that you guess and you're wrong and nobody will remember your prediction and so on. So to give you an example, you know, somebody saying that, uh, you know, aut autonomous vehicles will be on the roads by 2030. Okay, so if you take that number, if you take the, the uh, if you take uh, a logarithm, if you take 1.5 times the log and base two of the number of years, then this person is saying that it's gonna be more like six years that they come along. Okay, because uh, forget about linear thinking, um, it's exponential growth that we're talking about. Okay, so what does this mean um, in terms of population? So we have all these population projections. Okay, these are UN projections of population growth. Okay, this is their high scenario, medium scenario, low scenario, low scenario is peaking at about 8 billion soon, medium and high go up. Okay, um, and they talk about ways to justify this, number of kids per children, etc. projections in different, different continents and so on, okay? So they try to make uh, projections, um, and then this is different countries, the rank, the population projected, et cetera, and then you can break all that, you can combine all that stuff and you can try to get a global population rate. And these are the biggest cities in the world, the projected populations, 2025, 2050, et cetera. Okay, now these things all assume business as usual, you know, the earth can, can support it. But what do other people say? Well, Lovelock most famously said that, um, where is it? He said, before, back in 2007, he was saying, the earth's population would be called from today's 6.6 .6 billion, that was in 2007, to as few as 500 million by 2100. Now he's backed off from that a little bit, but I tend to think, you know, my view is that this projection is probably more accurate than any of those other UN projections. Um, in fact, what I've said about population is if you just go to my website and Google population, um, there's a couple things here. This was a few years ago when the population was 7.3 billion, growing at 1.3% a year. Now it's 7.5, growing at 1.1. We have two scenarios. Population remains the elephant and continues to grow unchecked. Okay, perhaps climate, okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm running out of time for this video, so go to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and have a look at my stuff, and I'll continue this in a second part video. Okay, thank you.